Welcome to today's webinar, uh, Winning Tactics to Make Your CS Team More Effective. I'm Arielle Kransau, and something that, um, just to learn a little bit about me, um, you all know now that I love sweets. Part of that is that Cocoa Puffs is my absolute favorite cereal snack food group. Uh, <laughs> and I still eat them regularly while I'm hiding in the corner of my kitchen so my kids don't see because I still make them eat healthy things. <laughs> um, something that. That, uh, something else you probably already know about me is I run content marketing at North Pass, and I'm really excited to be with all of you here today. Uh, for those of you that don't know North Pass, uh, North Pass is a learning management system that makes it easy to create online academies, giving businesses the ability to improve their customer training programs. Uh, before I introduce our amazing guest, just going to do some quick housekeeping. Um, our chat is obviously active and really excited to hear from you throughout the conversation. Uh, if you want to save your questions to the end, uh, we also have a Q&A box. We'll answer those questions at the end. Feel free to pop in. We're going to try and make this a conversation with everybody. So if you have something to add throughout our conversation, please just use the chat as much as you'd like. Um, Today, we're going to talk about tactics you can use to improve your customer success teams and your own personal performance with the one and only customer success <laughs> coach, among many other things that I'm going to add, Brian Neal. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi, Ariel. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're able to be here with us today. Um, one of the most interesting things I found out about, um, about Brian is that he is an actual NFL referee. So Truth. it's only slightly elevated in coolness because the Super Bowl is two weeks away and yeah. we're not excited at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he does a million things um, besides being, you know, being a coach, being a ref, which I don't know how you have time for other things, but you also have a podcast and, yeah, you know, and I don't even know what else you do, but there's so there's much more. going on. <laughs> Um, and so thank you for taking your time to be here with us today. Oh, I love it. This is awesome, Ariel. Thank you. And I'm super excited. CS is one of my favorite places to uh, live right now. Um, I grew up kind of in the sales side. CS, I love. And yes, I'm an NFL referee. Uh, this is not for this, but now's your chance. So you have a real NFL ref, real live in the flesh. I just worked the Cowboys 49ers game two weeks ago. You can ask me a question later at the end, but let's, we'll stick to the CS stuff now. And then maybe if there's some questions about football, you'll be allowed and I'll be your chance. We'll have to turn the recorders off though for those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so before we jump in, um, yeah. I'm just going to ask, because the audience here, I'm fairly sure is mostly customer success in yep. that zone. Um, but I yep. guess I just wanted to know very quickly so that we can sort of direct our conversation is how long have you been in customer success? All right, we got some newbies. Oh, yep. we've got a bunch of people are pretty seasoned. I'm looking for that 11 plus. Yeah. CS was sort of almost invented then, it seems like. You know what I mean? It's only yeah, people who've been in it since the beginning. I love it. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay. So people are still popping in. Voting. So. All right, I'm going to end this. We're going to let you know. So the majority of yes. people here, have been in somewhere in the four to seven range, but we've got a decent uh -huh. amount of eight plus. Uh, we got, well, we kind of got a smattering. So there we go. Um, and someone who's not in CS. So we're really excited for you to be here. Yes. For you to be here and love to learn what everybody is doing um, as our conversation goes on. Yeah. Uh, so to get started, something that I think we can't ignore in the customer success space right now is what's going on in the economy. Sorry to start really heavy, everybody, <laughs> um, especially in tech. Last week, I saw a report from Gong noting that deals are taking 7% longer to close, which mm -hmm. means that there's more pressure than ever to retain existing customers. I'd love to get your take on how that's affecting the way customer success teams are working. Yes, I'll give you my uh, take and, and for perspective too, so that everyone knows so we've been in the, in the um, 
sales training, coaching, development business um, for longer than I care to say. I'm to that point in my life where I say it, and it's like, oh, uh, I haven't. I was born after that, so it's 25 years I've been doing this. A long time, um, uh, almost more. Actually, it's 27 now. That I think about it. It's been a long time, um, and I grew up as a salesperson. Um, I accidentally got into CS. The reason I accidentally got into it is one of my clients, who was a tech company. Um, was sort of a startup within an existing place, but they needed to start a CS team. And so I worked with their leadership to create it from ground up. So I do lots of research. And, and this was this was about eight years ago, nine years ago or so. So it was a while ago. Um, and I have fallen in love with, with the role. And here's why. And it's so funny. I told my wife is our CEO. We're proudly female-led organization. Um, I'm just the, I just do the teaching and coaching. She runs the business for us. And um, I told her, I said, I need to get some old audio of me saying this. And here's what I've been saying for a couple of years, at least probably three. Sales is going to become automated. Sales is going to become automated. And I'm a salesperson. You watch it with chat GPT. If you know about chat GPT, the, the smart AI oh. and you see, sale, I mean, it can do, it's frightening, isn't it? It's frightening. It can write sales leads or uh, emails. It can write uh, sales questions. And then it can interact. And so that's coming. What cannot be replaced is a human after the fact. I don't believe CS can be automated. I truly don't. It's too complicated. And there's too much interaction. Plus, there's too much emotion that happens after we've onboarded a client or brought them in where we have to play support person, counselor, therapist, and technical support, all the above. You all, all of us that are in CS, that's the thing. So I first validate by saying you're in a great spot even though there's layoffs going on around you. I think CES is the place to be. And I say that as a core DNA salesperson. So that's the first con context, context statement I want to say. So bravo to you. You're in a great spot. That's my opinion. Um, and then we teach a very philosophical approach to CS. Um, we have a three-part framework. And by the way, I'll write some things on the board. It's more of like my habit. So I'll always read because sometimes people <laughs> say, I can't read what's on the board. I'll read it to you. Um, but the um, the free part framework goes uh, think, do, and say. Think, do, and say. Think, do, and say. All right? Most people don't have a common um, philosophical foundation that they um, put um, all their action and language upon. They just sort of talk and do. And we go problem solve. So in the thinking column, we think this is where we start to differentiate ourselves as CS pros. Here's where it applies to direct question, Ariel, is... The first two elements in the thinking column, there are 10 of these. I'm only going to give you a couple of them today. But the first two, the first one is the concept of abundance in the world in the marketplace. Our world is an abundant place. It just is. There are people everywhere. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Ariel lives in New Jersey. Uh, when you go around Indianapolis, you're like, where do all these people come from? And we're itty bitty. We're in the middle of a bunch of cornfields. She, she would die. She's like, this isn't a lot of people. And then you go to New York and then you go to Philly, then you go to DC, then to Florida. There's, it's amazing. Look at all the businesses. They're everywhere. The market's massively abundant. abundant. The second thing is we teach people to operate with a very, very healthy sense of detachment. We like to teach people energetically, emotionally to be okay with outcomes, good or bad. They just are because there's nothing you can do about it. Clients cancel. They do. They leave. Um, people lose jobs. They do. And for most of us, when I lose a job, they go on to something else. It sucks. It makes you sad. Sometimes it makes you feel worthless and stuff. I've been there. My first business, I went bankrupt, like legit. You know, like I thought my car was getting repoed. And it, I learned from that experience that this is just part of the deal. So in the midst of all this, I would encourage you to buy into these philosophies of the abundance of the world around you and, and a good, healthy sense of detachment, and then stay focused on what you're there to do, which is serve and take care of a customer. That will win in the end. Even if they do come to you and say, hey, we overhired, you know, we're going to, you know, kill half the department, not kill that, not, not, you know, <laughs> like go of half the part, wrong word, sorry, you know, let go of half the department. It's not you because you did your job. You slept well at night. Take pride in that. It's so hard. I know it's hard to shut all that off. I call it corporate. You need to put on corporate earmuffs and don't let the noise in. Because what happens, and we've seen some huge brands, Ariel, right? I mean, people we all know, Salesforce, Google, Microsoft. Yeah. Then we're thinking, oh my God, if they can do it, well, my, you know, Series C startup, she's, they, you know, they can too. 
So just deep breathe that thing and just focus on your customer. That's where your um, attention should be. We call that third one. We call the third element here. That's the last one I'll give you. It's called intent or intention. We just have you so focused on good, solid intention to be a good, a good steward of your customer relationship. And then you sleep all at night. And then if they don't need you, someone else does. I promise you someone else does. That's my take. I don't have anything <laughs> going on. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much there. I can't even begin to unpack what you just said, but I mean, the way that customer success really just so much is riding on their shoulders. Like what you said about that needing to like, just like detachment, like needing to just detach from what's going on at whatever X company who's their, their customer. And you can't always know you could be the best customer success, you know, person around and you can't control outside things and have that Mm -hmm. affect your day to day. Um, but there are so many things that you can do as, and I'm sure there's someone on here that's been, you know, affected by, by team cuts and everything. And there are just so many ways that you can be more efficient more effective with your time, uh, when you're talking with customers and ways to, you know, there's, and we'll get into, you know, I don't want to get into customer education right this second, but we're definitely <laughs> yeah. going to get into that yes. for a little bit. But yes. something that I think you talked about when, when we were on a, on a call together um, last week was you talk a lot about like date and calendar based efficiencies. So actually making your time talking with customers yeah. more efficient and more yep. effective. And I think yes. that's something that you can take away all the layers, but customer success people and professionals still exist and are still such a necessary part of the entire customer experience. So what can I think people on the phone, like when they're speaking with customers, how could they actually be more efficient, more effective so that yeah. they might be ha- have more customers, more accounts on their plate right now than they ever have? <laughs> yes. How do you make that work? Yeah. This is difficult, isn't it? This is what, this is the reality. And we work with uh, dozens, we work with hundreds of companies, but dozens of CS teams. We're still not quite to hundred CS totally, but we're close. And we also run peer groups for um, VPs of client success or chief customer officers. So we have four of those groups and they're, and, and someone said in the chat, this is, this is CS therapy. It kind of is because we need it. Here's why Ariel, I'm going to validate what you're saying. Um, before any of the cuts, it was hard. So we had workload problems before we started to let go of teams and go from a team of 25 to eight. We, and here's the, here's the, the good, and this is good. I tell you, I, I, I'm saying what you live, but I want to, I want to try to let you see the good in it. It's so important. That's why you're getting all the stuff and you get stuff from, think of who you get. I'll go in the tech world because a lot of CS people are in tech. So you get it from sales, you get it from product, you get it from finance, collections, things like that. Um, you get it from the customer and you're in the middle. You're stuck. You're stuck in the middle. And Ariel said earlier, you, you know, you're a great CS person. You do your follow through, you do your QBRs, you do all the things you're supposed to do. That it was some of you are charged with growth and expansion. And you have a product release that sucks. You, you, what can you do? You're, and all of a sudden you're catching all these, but you know, all this stuff's coming at you. It's a really, really difficult thing. The good news about that is it's critical. This is why we can't automate it. I don't, I don't believe at this point. Can't be automated. It needs a human, a skilled human. So now throw the cuts in there, even worse. So how do you handle it? Okay. I gave you the thinking column stuff. That's that's always where I start because and it is kind of CS therapy to get us into a place where we control what we can control. We deep breathe through the things that we can control. Um, we recognize this is a little thing that CS people and NFL referees have in common. Uh, we catch a lot of hell I'm just being real. Some of you probably bitched at me and didn't even know it. I'm a pretty nice dude. I smile a lot, but when I'm out there and I screw over your team, I screw up the giants. You guys, oh, that guy sucks. Okay. My little cheesy phrase that I've been doing it for like 36 years. So it doesn't bother me as much as it used to, but my little cheesy phrase is they're mad at my shirt. They're not mad at me because <laughs> I'm wearing this black and white striped shirt. Not right now, but I'm on the field, right? They're mad at my shirt. They're yelling at my shirt. They're not yelling at me. Because when I go and change and see you in the public, I'm me. You're like, your guy's a pretty nice guy. He wouldn't hurt anybody. He wouldn't do anything bad intentionally. Doesn't seem like that kind of guy. But boy, when I got that black and white striped shirt on, it's like, you duh, duh, duh. and so CS people are in the same boat. They're they're up. A client is upset at your role 
they're not necessarily upset at you. They're upset because the functionality is not working, not necessarily because of you. So I want you to first frame that up, okay? Now let's get into the tactical side of things. Once I get that energy square, um, as Ariel said, you're likely gonna have to do less with more. I need you to be open-minded here because this is very counter to how we we're taught, okay? Um, the first thing, this comes from my, I got a coach too. His name's David Meltzer. I was just on his Instagram live about a half hour. Ago. Um, he uh, teaches me um, to be a student of my calendar. A student of my calendar. And when I say student, I mean constant study of my calendar. And what David has taught me is that the conventional 30-minute meeting, 45-minute meeting, hour meeting does not have to be so. Once you decide and commit to doing a 10-minute meeting, and I can prove this because I've done it, you can figure out how to get a really, really productive meeting done in 10 minutes. As, and people think that there's, I told you, you have to be open to this. There's no way. And so what I teach here, I call this pruning. This is called pruning. Pruning came from a book um, called Necessary Endings by Henry Cloud. Necessary Endings. It's a great life and business book together. Henry Cloud's the author. Um, but he talks about this idea of pruning. So we are constantly looking at our calendars and pruning. You prune by minutes, not by hours at first. So let's say you have um, a standing uh, monthly check-in with your customer that's 30 minutes. As weird as it sounds, I want you to prune that to 20. If you do that times 10 clients, you just created 200 minutes in a month. That's three hours, I think, if my math's right. You know, right? So yeah, more than three hours. See what I mean? If you're doing that, and then you just continue to prune. And you say, boy, I've got this 20-minute check-in on the calendar. Can I do it in 15? I prune the calendar. Can my QBR go from 45 minutes to 30 minutes? And I'm constantly moving it backwards for efficiency reasons, okay? You're going to find almost no resistance, almost none from a customer, if Ariel's my customer, saying, and we got a good relationship, most of you do in CS. I say, hey, Ariel, I've got a proposal for you. I know we've got these 30-minute standing meetings. I'm trying to be more efficient with the time. Would it be offensive to you or bad at all if we try to get our 30 minute minute done, 30 minute meeting done in 15 minutes? And she might go, hell no, let's do it, right? You try to. Now there are times when people say, no, I love our time together, keep it, no problem. Most people go, oh gosh, that would be awesome actually. I'd love 15 minutes back. And I won't tell anybody that I got it. I'll keep it to myself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so pruning the calendar is one thing I want you to think about. The other, this is, now this is like Sudoku. You say Sudoku, is that how you say that? Sudoku, yeah. I think it's Sudoku. With the calendar is meetings do not have to start on the top, bottom, and sides of the hours. Our brains think everything has to start at 8, 8.30, 8.15, 8.45, or 9. There's no rule about that that I can find anywhere. We said, this is how it rolls. You can start a meeting at 8.10 and go until 8.40, or you can start it at 8.10 and go till 8.25, do a 15-minute meeting. That gives you buffers at the ends to take a breath. CS people, you need to take a breath. You know this, you're living this, right? That's one of the reasons you're here, <laughs> to take a breath and learn. But, but playing Sudoku with your calendar in a unique way is very freeing as you get more workload on you to be more efficient. And I think it's good for your customers too. I think you'll see people will buy into this. I have a 15 minute call with my coach, David Meltzer, once a month. I pay him a good chunk of money for that 15 minutes. Because I know it's 15 minutes, when I'm on the phone with him for my coaching session, I am very prepared and very direct and to the point, as is he. And we get more done. It's funny now that we're in a groove, our 15 minute coaching calls, we get them done in about eight minutes. And then we kind of BS for five or six. It's crazy, but it works. And so you, we have to embrace this idea that that can work. Internal meetings, yes, that sort of thing. Um, so if I could just cut in, like, please, what are the it. types of things that you do to take a meeting from 30 minutes down to 10 minutes, right? What are the types yeah. of things that you take out? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so let's talk about the uh, the agenda. So the first thing, that's one thing to say is, um, is um, and most of you do this, I know, are you working off of a defined agenda? Okay, um, I'm a huge fan. If you can get your agenda shrunk to three pieces, then you're good. And you're gonna play the 80-20 rule here. Or you can play Sudoku with that, which is um, if I'm meeting, I have a monthly meeting, recurring meeting with my client, then you know January, March, April, uh, May, Every other month can be topic two can be this. And then other months, it can be that. It can be something. So we're going to go KPIs on the even months. And then we're going to go um, 
uh, leading indicators on the odd months or whatever. So instead of talking about all those things every time, just skip a month, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm a huge fan of a three-point agenda as best you can get it and try to keep that agenda to three points. Um, and then you have to play with what is, you know, is best for you. Now, the trick to this, um, and so funny, we try to solve all these problems ourselves. This is kind of a rub I have with product people too. And I love product people, they're awesome. Sometimes though, they, they create products without asking what the customer wants. It's funny, isn't it? Some of you are gonna laugh at me because you know what I'm talking about. Um, so when you're with this and you say, I'm trying to get more efficient with my meetings, just go ask your customer. Here's our normal agenda, six things. If we had to pare it down to three, which three would you pick? Your customer goes, yeah, we always talk about the dashboard. I see, I don't need to talk about the dashboard. And here all along for a year and a half, every meeting, QBR, you've been talking about the dashboard. And they're too nice because they like you and they like your products. They don't say anything. They're like, yeah, you know, the dashboard, I really don't even, I mean, we look at it all the time. So I'm like, oh my gosh, why have we been talking about it for all this time? See, it's hard. So just ask them, just ask your customer or parent it down. You'll see people love this. No one's going to argue to be more efficient with something. They just won't. You're trying to be more efficient with their time, your time. Stick to the good stuff. So that's one thing to do. Um, can I go to a tactical thing, Ariel? Absolutely. We love uh, and this, this is tactical. Yeah. Okay. So this is very, I want you all to start to use this immediately. Um, our last line of every agenda we do at Plain Zebra, as best we can, we're not perfect. We do this as best we can. Says these words. And I'm not a big script guy. I don't like scripts, but this is as close to a script as I'll give you. It says, get calendars out get calendars out what do uh most agendas end with what statement ariel or, or version of this usually the last part of an agenda is what would you say like, when are we going to talk next, next or, yeah or next steps any, any questions yeah, any questions next good steps. thank you anthony yeah. any questions next <laughs> step no everything looks good to me okay sounds good we'll all get this stuff done we'll get that feature ticket put in there and get that on the list for product team and uh, we'll be good to go and i'll I'll you know, shoot a note to you later to get scheduled for uh, next quarter. They go, okie dokie. Thanks, Anthony. Bye. And we don't have anything clear on the calendar. Okay. If you do QBR, some of you don't. I know QBR, there's kind of debate whether what the value of that. I think it's valuable if we work with our customer to make it valuable. So we're a fan of scheduling the QBR at least two months out. And if you can recur it through the year, do it through the year. There's only four of them. But if the last line of every agenda for anything you're going to do is get calendars out, you will see people go, okay, and they get their calendars out. And then do you have your phone, Ariel, nearby, anywhere? You do, near-ish, okay. yeah. Okay, near-ish, nope. all right. No. Okay, <laughs> now, so I am not a fan of sales trickery. I don't do that, okay? But I want you to notice something. And we did absolutely not talk about this, did we, Ariel? Not at all. We did all. not talk about this. Uh-oh, what are we doing? I want, <laughs> you didn't even know what you did. I don't know if the rest of you were watching, but at, did you see what I did? I said, do you have your phone? And I waved mine. Ariel, without asking, without thinking, goes, yeah, nearby, hang on. She reached for it, got it, and waved it back at me. Yeah. I did not tell her to do that. Watch the video back. There was no cue. We did not plan this, did we, Ariel? We did not plan <laughs> no, this. No, we True? didn't. And you're and like, I oh my gosh. I usually don't have my phone on me when I'm doing that. <laughs> That's good that. that you did that. I'm glad you did. Because even if you didn't, there's a way to that, okay? <laughs> now, Ariel, can you see your calendar on your phone? I can. Yes. And what did she just do? What did you just do, Ariel? I picked Ariel? it up and I you went to, down my calendar. to your calendar. Yeah. This is all you need to do to schedule another meeting with people. And what we do sometimes is we just leave the meeting without doing what I'm teaching you here. And it's so easy to do, okay? It's very awkward. Now, if Ariel didn't have her phone in the room, which she usually doesn't for webinar, that's okay. Because she also has her laptop or a yeah. computer. I'm assuming you could shrink the screen and go find your calendar on there if you wanted to, right? So it's nearby, she can get it, okay? But most people have it, you know, literally within, you know, four inches of us, or we have, you know, heart palpitations. So um, <laughs> th then once you just, and you're doing it in the spirit of being clear and efficient, if you're taking notes, write those two words down, clear and efficient. If, go in the chat room, if you love doing, uh, let's schedule a meeting ping pong in email, if you love that, shout it out in the chat room. I love chasing people around in email. Hey, Ariel, how the next, these dates? No, I can't do those. Who loves that in email? Nobody. Best Everybody email hates it. ever sent. I don't know what it's you're a, talking about. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. But it's what, right? it's what people do it all the time. All so the time. To, to avoid that, no one likes it. Clear and efficient, everyone loves. Everyone loves clear and efficient. And this is the spirit of doing that. 
So if you're going to have another call with a client, like it, maybe it's a, a, a ticket or a training thing or an onboarding thing, instead of saying, so yeah, why don't you get your team, you know, up to speed on what we just talked about today. And I'll shoot you a call in a couple of weeks and we'll, uh, we'll get another training on the calendar. Everyone's going to go, okay, sounds good. Okay. Then you're in chase mode. Now you have no clarity whatsoever. Even when you say, I want you, this, I'm real, you can tell I go crazy on this one. All right. Saying things like in a couple of weeks is so vague. It seems like it's not, but it's really vague. Like when is a couple of weeks, especially on a Wednesday. And then if I go late next week, when is that? Does that start at 12.01 PM on Wednesday? Or if I count Sunday as Monday, like some people do, you know, it's like, okay, you know, <laughs> it's Tuesday afternoon. Well, there's a window there, but it's not precise. So I want to teach you on today's call to learn to talk in precise dates all the time and just obsess over it. And just, and it's all in the spirit of clarity and efficiency and avoiding ping pong back and forth. Nobody likes that. This is all in the spirit of your customer. This has nothing to do with you or me. It's not about us. It's about them. And you just say it that way. We like to be clear and efficient. Last thing we always do, we're gonna have another step. I know we need to follow up on these job, these uh, support tickets you got us. So uh, you got your phone. I want to get our calendars out just like that. And you'll see, they'll go, oh yeah, right here. They'll wave it. Now here's another little trick. So we're going to talk to it. Play along, Ariel. We even though we didn't plan this, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> so let's pretend Ariel and I, we've got some support things that came up and she's got four new people on our team. We need to get them on board. We need to schedule. So I'm like, okay, I need to do a little work on my side. Then we need to talk again. Um, I'm actually leaving on a vacation. So nothing's going to happen until I get back. Can you look at the week of the 13th, end of the week, 16th and 17th? I need about 20 minutes for us to uh, get back together so I can, I can show you a schedule out loud for this stuff. Look on the 16th or 17th and oh, tell yeah. me what, 20 minutes. Give me a time. I'm doing that, 2.20. Oh, thank you, 2.20 on which day? On um, Thursday, the 16th. Thursday, the 16th, perfect, two, actually that works, look at that. Okay, now hang tight and I'm not gonna do this for time. I'm gonna send you the invite right now. And I would actually, on my phone or my laptop, type Ariel Krantz and I'd say you know, follow up on this the onboarding schedule and I would send it while we're still sitting here okay it feels a little clunky at first but once you do it a few times you get past the clunkiness because you're doing something good for them and I go okay I just sent it tell me when you got it I promise you this will Ariel will look at her phone yeah. or her computer and she'll go got it. got it and I go just accept that we're good to go every time I'm telling you and here's what happens most of you do this 98 percent there most of you will go, hey, I've got everything I need, Ariel. Um, why don't I, uh, I'll make myself a note to call you uh, next Friday and we'll recap the schedule at that point. Is that okay? Again, Ariel's a customer. She likes me, likes us. She goes, yeah, sounds good. Thanks. She doesn't mean bad, but boy, it's inefficient. Then I call her, when am I supposed to call her Friday? What if I call her 8.30? No answer. Then a voicemail. Now when do I follow up? When, you know, it's like yeah. dating. You know it's what I mean? Confusing. It's confusing and it's awkward. I'm like, I don't want to be stalky, but I don't want to like let too much grass grow. So let's get out of that game. CS people, let's get into clarity and efficiency dates on calendars. Use the little 20 minute tool. And I promise you the experience for your customers will get way, way, way better. And your life will get way better as you get more pressure put on you, which you are going to, um, that this is going to be critical for you all to do this. So yeah. And rant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I want that really like leads in nicely to sort of like the next thing I wanted to, yeah. to chat about, which is we're talking about calls and how to make our actual calls more efficient, but yeah, we were talking about like all the things that we do, like to eliminate actual calls. So mm -hmm. obviously North Pass, we're a learning management system. We're big fans of customer education and I know you are too. Huge. And so where are the, I'd say like from your perspective, like we spend a lot of time talking with people about onboarding and like getting that to the next step, but there are also, maybe there's something that you can think about where there are, your team might not have customer education or digital customer education and a learning management system yet. How do you get your team ready to do that? Like, where can you go and see when you're thinking about like, where are the pieces that you, you know, that you think about that you can like pull out and say, well, we can get rid of all of these meetings so that we can focus on being more strategic with our customers. Yeah, that's good. I'm a huge fan. So there's an old philosophy called uh, Occam's, Occam's razor, Occam's razor, some people call it, which, which 
uh, it's a philosophical um, argument from old Greek philosophy that basically says the uh, best answer to every problem is the simplest one. The best answer to every problem is the simplest one. So an easy example, if I write a book and I want to sell 10,000 copies of my book, the hardest way to do that is to go door to door and sell one copy to 10,000 people. The best way to do that is to go to Walmart and say, you want to buy these 10,000 books? They say, sure. And they buy them all at once. So that's the, that's the philosophy I apply first to, to the mm -hmm. problem to say, okay, what's the easiest thing to do this, to, way to do this? Then that leads me to automation. And specifically, I don't know this is where we're going, but the, with, um, we use video a lot for this. Mm -hmm. um, so we, there are lots of video um, providers, Vidyard, CoVideo, BombBomb, there's, there's several out there. Um, but we are big fans of leveraging video in all things to help that. The video can live in a system like NorthPass, I think, right? You can hold video mm -hmm. in yours. Yep. Yeah. And so people can go and do that. And then same thing internally with interactions. So I'm saying, can I cut out a meeting and send someone a video that's three minutes long as opposed to having a 15 or 20 minute meeting yeah. for it? That's what we're looking to. That's the same back to pruning. What we talked about earlier is the same deal. The technology is everywhere. If you have, I have high school and I know Ariel, your kids are a little younger, but I've got high school and college kids now. Um, they don't know any of the local news stations, the news people. They don't, all they do is watch videos on their phones, on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, da, 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 da. Yeah. and this next generation of people that are getting into these CS roles and buying roles and, and um, people that use software, the people that you train, they're used to that. And so we're a huge fan of this little micro hit, a two to three minute video for anything at all it, to replace a meeting. We're big, big fans of that. Um, when you do video, um, people can see your inflection. They can see it. They can't get it through email and that sort of thing. Um, I get a little, I get uh, irritated when my, most of my clients don't do this, but when I as the on the other end of this, when I get a really long instructional email on how to use like software or something, oh, yeah. it literally makes my head fall off. Um, one of my financial um, uh, people where I've got like for our company 401k and stuff, they send me these just, um, just awful. They're just like, I'm trying to find one. They're just <laughs> terrible, terrible, like instruction things. And I'm not a detail guy. I don't want to talk about it at all. I want someone to like, give me a video and say, Hey, Brian, there's three things you got to do here. Go to that button, press there, do that. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I can do that. But I get so I irritated. Mean, even something that I think everybody can relate to is I got a new car recently and you know, you get that big, thick manual. I think the yes. best thing that happened was the guy that like from the car company sold me the car. Yeah. He sent me an email with links to like six videos of this is how your car works. Yes. And I didn't have to sit there for 25 minutes while he pointed and showed me all the buttons. Like he was just like, here's a video. I think you got it. And that yes. saved all of us a bunch of time. Cause then I got into my garage and I sat and I was like, oh, like how do I set <laughs> up all this? And 10 minutes later, you know, it's all done. So I think video is just one of the most effective ways to do. And I think the big thing that we talk about at North Pass is repeatable Yes. Learnings. So yes. things that you're saying time and time again, that's yep. how like when people come to North Pass, they're oftentimes they're like, well, we don't really have content. We don't have this. Like, what are you saying five times a day? Yep. Or what do you say every week? And that's where you start. And that's where you say, if you're saying it more than once, or you're saying it to every customer, this should not be something that you're saying on a live call anymore. This should not be an email. This should not, this should be a video in a customer, in your customer Academy. Uh, and that's, that's how we sort of talk about getting started in that, in that area. Um, and just like a quick, so I understand like who, you know, on the call in terms of like what, um, where you are in your customer education journey, I'm just launching a poll just to understand like where you are in there. Um, you're just sort of starting out, um, you mostly do one-on-one -on -one calls, have some courses. And I'd say I'm like really happy to, you know, to see, and it makes sense um, as sort of like where the world is, is coming, is sort of gone in the last several years. Um, but a good chunk of that is in, we have some courses in a customer academy in our learning management system, and we do a lot of live trainings. And it's mm -hmm. pretty like the 
I'll show this. The um, if everyone can see the yeah, results, great. Um, yeah. it's kind of people are in all different types of places. Yeah, and the more that people are, you know, over half of the people on this call are using a learning management system and realizing the benefits of customer training. And I think that that's something that putting, you know, customer training doesn't always have to be video on an LMS, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think everybody here on this call understands that video is something that captures people's attention. We actually, um, you know, there's a stat out there. That's a pretty well-known stat. It's like 90, like people retain like 95% of what they see in a video message and like 10% when they read yeah. it or yes. hear it. Like, yes. so it's, it's such a strong platform and it's so easy to do. Like so easy. My three and a half year old knows how to take a video. Literally. <laughs> and thanks for saying that. So I a hundred percent, we use video, like it's our job at blind zebra. Mm -hmm. um, now we just moved. So this is my like uh, fake studio right now. So it'll be look way better in about two weeks. But uh, so we got video equipment, we've got video switcher, we got all the stuff, mics, everything. And you don't need any of this stuff. All you need is a phone. You can do a video on your phone today. And it's so funny. I jokingly say Ariel is funny you bring this up. People have resistance around this. Like, well, I don't want to do customer education. You know, let's do a paid actor, actress, or do that. I'm like, no, that's stiff and boring. They want to see yeah. you, and you're the CS person. You're their, you're their person. And then people, this is where I laugh, is that people go, well, I don't like how I look on video. I'm like, okay, I hate to tell you this, but that's how you look. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> you just do. You know, <laughs> or like I don't like the sound of my voice. I'm like, well, you probably shouldn't talk because that's how your voice sounds to the whole world. It doesn't to you, yeah. and I get that that hesitation, but we have to get over that and just get comfortable. People love real and authentic. And if I can do a, a customer education snippet for three minutes, like, Hey, a success story from another customer or a voice, a customer dual headed video like this one, or just an in the camera to say, I'm going to walk you through this thing. Now there's a mechanical thing to this. I want to, I want to point out on my board here. I'll read this. Remember, I'll read this to you. People like, I can't see the board. I'll read it to you. Um, this is numbered lists, numbered lists a way to help you organize thoughts in any sort of video, a customer coaching video and onboarding and customer learning, or just a video to your, to your client is to always think and speak in numbered lists. So you can do this all the time. There are three parts to this. There are four parts to this. Um, the thing I taught you earlier, I forgot to tell you that when I set the meeting with Ariel, that has a name, we call it a clear future date, CFD. Write that down, underline it, circle it. CFD, we always have dates, CFDs. We live and die by them here at Blind Zebra. Um, a, a CFD has four elements, time, date, action, and a green check mark accepted um, note from our client. Green check mark. Okay. Time, date, action, green check mark. Everyone can remember four things over and over. And if I said it to you a few more times and you were a client of mine, you would you'd be done. I'm like, what's a clear future date? You got a clear future date, time, date, action, green check. Done. Got it. You got it. I've just, I've just educated you as my customer that simply. Okay. If I said instead, theoretically, well, you know, we like to have clear next steps. We do like that. We talk around it. Harder to remember. Everyone can remember four things, three things. Okay. So when you're doing these videos, even if you're, if they're customer education stuff, speak and talk and think in numbered lists. Very, very, very important. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And um, so there's, I think we're just running a little bit short on time. So I just want to yes. be really cognizant of that. No. So I'm just going to dive into one other thing that I think okay. is really helpful for, for everybody on the call, which is, so we're making everything more efficient, right? Yep. That's the name of the game is, there, but we're making everything more efficient for a reason, because mm -hmm. there are things that customer success professionals can do with their time. That's more than focusing yes. on onboarding or training um, or just, yes needing a 20 or 30 minute call, right? There's larger, more strategic things that they can do. And so what, I think if you could just paint that picture of sure. what you can do, if you actually put into practice more efficient, call, like more efficient calls and, and, you know, yes. cutting down on trainings. online yeah. calls. I love that. And I hope that those of you listening, you probably love to do trainings, but boy, wouldn't it be nice to have some of that time back? You're like, oh my gosh, I give anything to have some time back. But then like Ariel said, what are you doing? Now, outside of what I'm going to put on the board, you do need to rest a little bit. You need to breathe. 
breathe in your day, keep some space, keep buffers. Those little five, 10 minute buffers are really important. Most CS people literally go from zoom to zoom, to zoom, to zoom, to zoom, to zoom, to zoom. And they get done. And some of them don't feel like they accomplished anything after being on zooms for seven hours. So I feel for you for that. I hate that for you. I want you to feel accomplished. This is a way to do that with that extra time after you've rested. Okay. Remember I told you about the thinking column. So I said, there are 10 things. I gave you the first year. I'm going to give you another one. It's actually number seven on the list and it's called expert persona, expert persona. And when I first teach this to people, most people um, don't, um, they think it's something that it's not. Expert persona, most people think that means being an expert in, in your business. So expect Ariel and her team to be an expert in her North Pass learning management system and other LMSs. That's not what this means. <laughs> what this means is that me as the CS professional, I take a deep seated interest in being an expert in my customer's business, not in mine. That's baked into the cake. You better be an expert in yours or you shouldn't be in a CSC. That's just baked into the cake. This is about going an extra mile past that or an extra step past that to become an expert in theirs, okay? You know this, how do you get to become an expert in anything? GTS, everybody know what GTS stands for? Okay, forgive the language, Google that shit. Google that shit, that's what GTS stands for. You can learn anything on Google, anything. All you have to do is Google it. And then you go LinkedIn, you just search for things. So not only am I interested, if Ariel's my customer, not only am I interested in um, North Pass and their LMS, I'm interested in the whole tr trends around the whole LMS and learning function about micro training. And then past that, I'm interested in their, are they in a startup, right? Are they in a series D raise? What's their capital like? Where are they based? Are they looking for people? Can I be a connector to REL says, hey, we're looking for two more content management people uh, on our uh, marketing team. I say, you know what? I know someone who is at Salesforce who just got, this is true, by the way, who just, you know, in the one of the riffs that Salesforce had, she's on the street. She is awesome. I should put you two in touch. As I'm saying it out loud, I should put you in touch. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm practicing what I preach. Okay. Now, if Ariel's my customer, do I get paid for, you know, introducing her to this other woman and they, they, they work? No, I don't get paid for that. But what does it tell Ariel? It tells her that I care. At a deep level, I care about her and what she's doing. It also tells her deeper than that, that I'm listening and paying attention. People feel extremely cared for when you hear them and listen and pay attention. You're observant about their world. Even if they drop something, even if she says something in passing, I'll say, you know, you said something in passing two times ago, we were talking. I can't like get out of my head. You mentioned this. I actually have a friend that does something that helps the, the consult you on that. It could be anything. She's like, I've been thinking about starting yoga. She just says that real quick. All of a sudden, I'm thinking, you know what? My wife does yoga. I should I'll send her a little video. I say, hey, here's a little video series that my wife, Stephanie, when she started doing yoga, she did a few years ago. Just thought of you. Pass it along. It's very thoughtful, very genuine, very real. That, that will create tons of empathy and connection with your customer that most of us don't take that extra step. We just learn our product and how our product works at that company. We stop. I'm encouraging you with this extra time to go a little past that, become an expert in their world, personal and their business. That's a good one. I'm writing myself a note to connect that woman to you, Ariel, by the way. <laughs> it's what we do, right? We practice I'll what definitely we preach. follow up about it. I love it. Please do. At Tuesday right. at 1.05 p.m. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I'll be in Bora Bora. Sorry, <laughs> I won't respond. Sweet. Okay. So yeah. Um, so as we're getting really tight, we're getting a little bit tight on time. So yep. if anybody wants to pop a question into the Q&A, remember we said we'd answer one question um, yes. <laughs> about Brian, the referee, not Brian, yes. the uh, <laughs> right. customer of success guru, yes. if anyone's really interested. Um, but so a question that came in is what, I guess, what are the ways that, sorry, I'm just reading this wrong. Okay, you're good. <laughs> what are the ways that you can transition teams off of sort of the phone calls and onto the videos more? Oh, was, interesting. Hmm. If you have any advice there. Yeah, I'm thinking, because we've done this. We did it about three years ago where we basically went all in on video. So if you're, if you're in a sales process with Blind Zebra, you're going to get videos from us. You just will. We follow this, this pattern that our, our provider, our partners co-video in that one, but um, they've taught us what to do. Um, 
the first thing, just like anything else, is kind of what you're doing is you need to like teach yourself to do it in a safe space. So the first thing we do with a new person who's not used to video is we have them just first do videos and send them to themselves and then delete them. So nobody has to see it, right? <laughs> you can uh and um and other and all this stuff and, and screw up or whatever and send it to yourself and then do another one, do another one, okay? Then eventually you'll feel comfortable to send it. I'm gonna send it to Ariel, you know, safe space. And if I'm if Ariel's my leader, she's gonna hold me safe here. She's not gonna be like, oh my gosh, that was terrible. You can find the good in it, right? And just and we just keep doing it. The number one rule though about uh, it's really everything is the is consistent behavior. It's the, there's a book called uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Mm -hmm. 10,000 hour rules, a chapter in that book. It's really cool. And it's that you just keep doing it, doing it. And eventually they just come natural. And then once you get there, you wouldn't do it any other way. You won't do it any other way. I'm telling you. So yeah. Good. And just to add on to that with, um, with transitioning to video, I think if you're doing it with people, so if you're not just doing it yourself as the individual CS professional, but you're getting your whole like three, four, 10 person team to do it. I think doing mm. it together is, is sort of, you're in it together, you're in with somebody. It's like going, it's having a gym buddy, right? It's having just somebody yes. to do it with someone who's going to do the pain with yeah. you. Um, and even personally, like I recently spoke with, a uh, see you, Philippe. Right. Um, and just wanted to, you know, like I had to go and like say things and I'm out on this webinar and I'm talking and I don't, you know, I'm not in my head about every little thing that I'm saying, but when yes. I'm doing it and I'm recording it for myself, I'm like, oh my God, what am I saying? How's everybody? <laughs> like, and you think you sound so ridiculous, but obviously, yes. and you mentioned it before, like you don't sound so ridiculous to everybody else. Nope. And so I think just having a buddy and even just even like within your teams, like creating a buddy system to just have somebody that can watch it and give you and watching your own videos is painful. I know it is. It is isn't it? Um, at the beginning. Uh, yes. but just like, as you get better at it and better at it, you just sort of think about it less and less. And, um, but just having a buddy to do it with you is one of like the, the, you know, the best ways to go about it. And Great then, idea. um, in, on a related note, um, there's a question more about customer education, which is, yep. um, how do you actually like, what can you do to get the, the resources that you need, um, internally? Yeah. And the, huh. <laughs> and that's always really hard, right? And there yes, are people on the yes. call who have like functioning digital customer education programs. And there's, there was, it was 18%. People are just starting to piece it together. So this is definitely um, the question and you're not alone. And what, um, what that really is about. And I think from what we've seen at North Pass is realize that even if you're the sole person managing, creating courses for your LMS, number one, you already have this content. It's everywhere. Yes. Yes. Um, your blog, it doesn't have to be video. We love video. It doesn't have to start out as video. Mm -mm. You need just a few things to launch and then you build from there. A customer Academy is a living, breathing organism and it gets updated. And just like every other piece of content within your entire organization, everything gets updated. Everything has a V1 and everything has a V5. Love and it. so just making sure that you don't get so overwhelmed by the bigness of customer academies like HubSpot Academy, uh, right. you, know, you can see that and be like, we're never getting there. Yes. But that's not the goal. Like we have a, you know, a customer um, Agareb that launched in like a couple of months and he, it was one person managing it. And he just used his sales team. He used his, he used his support team. He used his marketing team to just get everything together. So like build on the relationships that you have in your, in your team. Um, and then there's the last question I'm going to answer yeah. is because there's something in the chat. Um, if an organization needs a few weeks to go through a change process, install software, and the second yeah. call doesn't happen until the install is finished, how do you avoid the ping pong email method when trying to schedule the next call? Oh, yeah. I see the whiteboard going into action. It's coming. Is that okay? Real quick. Great. I learned this yeah. from uh, a tech uh, CRO in Austin who was a client of mine. He taught me this. Here's the warning that Anthony, I think, asked the question for all of you. This one spooked me a little. I'm like, eh, this feels overly aggressive. He talked me into trying it. We started it about two years ago. Brilliant tool. Works about six and a half out of 10 times 
on a delay or a ghost situation. Six and a half, that's, that's huge numbers. This works, okay? Here's the name of it. It's called Calendar First. Calendar First is the name of the tool. The way you calendar first is if I'm in a process just like Anthony described with Ariel, and there's this kind of gap and we don't have anything scheduled. And Anthony's asking, as he should, well, how do I not go back to Ariel and say, can we get something scheduled? Here's what you do with calendar first. Instead of going to email, you go to the calendar, you pick any date you want, just pick one. You have no idea if it's going to work with Ariel and send her a calendar invite. Just send it to her with. I said this earlier, three point agenda. You can put that either in the body or in the email or both, or you can do an email and then a calendar invite back to back or vice versa. Any way is fine as long as they're right together so that this customer, so Ariel can see that I've got an agenda here. Okay. And you just tell her what you did. Hey, I, I, I took the liberty to try to try a date. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't let me know, here's what happens with this though. Here's, this is the theory why I think it happens. Emails go to email calendar invites. Where do they go? to the calendar. So now Ariel's in a different place in her life when she sees this. She sees it, it's usually gray when she's looking at her calendar. Oh, invite from Brian Neal Blind Zebra. Oh yeah, we gotta get, to, um, and then what she starts to do is go, now it's, it's friendly. She know we're trying to do this onboarding and change thing like Anthony's saying. So I can't do nine, but you know what? If I could scoot it to 9.30, I will. So she can either you know decline it or accept or say, can we do 9.30 and then it's booked, okay? Don't even go to the email, just go calendar first. This is our default now for ghosted or stalled things. Six and a half out of 10. It's awesome. Gave it to one of my clients. Resistance up front. I'm going to see them actually tomorrow. And I've been with them for two years. So I know them really well. But I gave them this. They're like life changing. They're like people they've been chasing around for months. They do this meeting booked. Now still you'll get blown off. They'll still blow this off even though I accept it. But you'll see. Calendar first courtesy of uh, a company called Chronologic in Austin and a guy named Aaron Bollinger. That's who gave me, I got to give him credit. So that's awesome. There's your answer. That Love that. And I have to say that that's happened to me before where <laughs> things have just kind of fallen <laughs> off and someone just sends yeah. me an invite. I'm like, oh yeah, totally. Right, that right, works. right. Like it's not, you know, and I say this, my, my husband owns his own business and he's always, he's doing a thousand things. And he's like, I don't understand how this person just forgot this. And I was like, well, <laughs> It's like, you're not always everybody's first priority, right? Like, <laughs> right. You're, like you're your first priority, right? And your agenda on your yes. computer and your calendar is your first priority. But <laughs> they've got 17 other things going on. And it's yes. like the same thing happens in business all the time. And yes. so we have know, a name for that, Aunt Ariel. It's, we call it inflated self-importance. <laughs> we, we, it's a word we use at Blind Zero. Like we all have inflated yeah. self-importance, don't we? Like not in an ego way, but like, yeah, it's just not yeah. the first thought. <laughs> so exactly. we can't expect exactly. it. Exactly. Um, but anyways, um, thank you, Brian. This was incredible. You're thank awesome. you everybody who joined the call. I know there are a couple other questions. We'll, I'll send email answers for those, uh, have no fear. Uh, and thank you all for joining. I will follow up with a recording of this, uh, in the next day or two. So don't worry if you forgot what Brian said, there was a lot in there. Um, really appreciate it. Brian, thank you so much. Have a great rest thank of your you. day. And shout out to my Hoosier guy uh, up there. I didn't, I didn't see the call, so I can't comment on it, but go Hoosiers. Right. Oops. That's great. See you, Ariel. Bye see everybody. Thanks one. for your time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.